the first time I heard it, it made me stop in my tracks. And this was months ago. This was months and months ago. I heard that mm-hmm. song, and I was like, that's my vibe. For some reason, yeah. that is my vibe. And I was so excited to come in and tell you guys about it because I was like, look at me discovering that. Right. I mean, and we were was, like, yeah, we know better. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't say that, but it, it was already <laughs> discovered. As long as you discovered it, man. <laughs> Everyone's taking credit for discovery, but it's Master Wolf <laughs> is the artist there. What do I call you? He's here. He's right here with us. Um, so a lot of people call me Wolf. Okay. My real name's Harry, whatever you prefer. I might call you <laughs> Harry Wolf. I mean, that seems like yeah. the perfect thing. You seem like a type of person to mix things up. So I'm always yeah. confused. Which way is up? <laughs> now, he's, Wolf is in Australia right now, so yeah. it must be the middle of the night. Yeah. I'll tell you what struck me, bro. It, it's always cool to hear a song that you connect with, and then you do some research on the artist and the brain behind it. And what mm. struck me before we get to the music was you knew what you wanted and you hustled to get it by doing stuff that wasn't necessarily a step on your career path, right? I mean, you were working in a whole different world to pay for studio time. Tell me a little bit about the sales work you were doing. Yeah, so, I mean, as soon as I left school uh, and graduated, I worked, like, full-time. I never, like, traveled. I think I traveled once in 11 years, like, overseas, maybe twice. And uh, for me, that was just, like, my financial supply for like studio, uh, getting my own home studio to work on like my craft. Mm -hmm. And um, like for me, my parents never let me, not like to say that they were bad parents, but they just didn't let me focus on music 100% and not ha- have a job they wanted me to work they wanted and you have to have a, some balance a fallback they wanted me to have routine and they i don't think they ever like realized how much i wanted to be like a rapper they maybe saw it as like a hobby or whatever but um yeah like the grind was always there i was always in the background i was working nine to five i was in sales a lot um, what'd you sell um i started i started in real estate believe it or not um, like commercial residential okay. residential yeah yeah residential and then mass wolf moved. coming to show you an in interior like take a look at this floor plan wild. <laughs> yeah and thing. then and then i uh ventured into like corporate suit uh helping businesses go digital um so away from paper uh-huh. and um like I did like stints, so you know, you know, retail stuff, but I've always been. And sales. you always, while you were doing that, while you, you always had your eye on this ball music. I was very unhappy you... while I was working. Well, like yeah. actually like literally depressed. Like uh, my mom brought it up to me the other day or the, like a month ago, she's like sent me like this massive message. And it was about when I caught her like crying after, after work one day. And I'm like, I don't get how these people Do enjoy it uh like oh because oh, i used to be like in telemarketing for a bit i was a mm. telemarketing manager yeah. mm-hmm. and uh that really hit me hard telemarketing like i was like i don't get how this is life so i just started like crying one day and i i said to my mom i have to do music like i can't, I can't yeah, you were su- it's like you're suffocating but and for a parent to hear that then yeah. she probably said hey go for it listen to here's what we're talking about here this is the track that we're playing What comes first, the lyrics, the beat, simultaneously? How'd you put that song together? Uh, always the beat, because the beat like outlines, I guess, the story for me, and it gives me a feel mm-hmm. of like what I can speak about. And then I usually ninety nine percent of the time will be working on the chorus after I hear the beat, because then it establishes like what it's about, the song, the topic, and I always try and relate like the verse with the chorus, which I do that in Astro. I talk about like depression and feeling out of place in the um chorus and i relay that back in the verse as well it's so fascinating if you listen to lyrics and what he's saying is storytelling about depression a little bit right yet Mm. when i hear the song all i want to do is turn up yeah yeah. you know yeah that's the whole point i guess like because i've worked in sales right i know this sounds might sound cheesy but i've been in business my whole life and like so like sometimes expecting the unexpected can be very powerful like uh Mm. for me like you hear the song and it's a banger and you just want mm-hmm. to play that in your your car while you're driving on a Sunday. But when you like dive deeper into the song and you get into the ocean, you figure out that it's actually about me feeling out of place. And you're like, mm. how does this work? This song that absolutely like bangs, but he's speaking about something so real. And I think that's what picked it up, especially during COVID, because a lot of people felt like that and they still yeah. feel out of place. 
So it was weird because the song was released in 2019. It wasn't made for TikTok mm-hmm. and it wasn't made for COVID. It literally mm-hmm. just fell into those those places. How, how did it break then? Because it, it was in circulation for a couple of years. Ryan, and you there, tell me. You tell I, me. I, I, I'm it's curious, cool. man, because I, I don't know. I, I guess it's something that's in circulation for a couple of years and you feel like, okay, yeah. I did that. I'm on to the next thing. And then boom, all of a sudden mm-hmm. 650 territories are playing it. Yeah. yeah, when you sign I a mean, record deal. <laughs> no, yeah, like it, I, it's like a really good question, and I, I firmly like believe that because you have to remember, like for for seven for seven to eight years of like my music career, even ten years, I was a nobody, like even more than that. And then two years ago, I had to make a new name. Like I, I wanted to take it like really seriously, so I came up with Mars Wolf, and I had no following, like zero on everything. So when I released Astronaut in the Ocean, maybe I had like a thousand followers on Instagram um so i'm still building but as the song got into more ears it was like a snowball effect yeah it just gradually became bigger and bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it was like friends telling their friends and their friends telling their friends and it just Mm -hmm. like it was kind of like that spread that yeah it's it's it it, there's the there's the slow roll and then you hit that peak where it's just explosion i mean it is just massive spread it happens before this was even on the radio i was at sushi with my husband like a few months ago and it came on and I was like, babe, I'm like, this is the song I was telling you about. And that's that word of mouth that like you need when you're yeah. you know, trying to blow up a song. Which surprises me a lot because one, we always said that it even wasn't my best song. And two, <laughs> I've, the way that it's resonated with like young kids has been very surprising to me. Like not the TikTok thing. Like I've get, I get videos of little kids dancing to it and singing the lyrics. And I'm like, there's no way I expected that in my life to see like five to 10 year old kids like going <laughs> yeah. to sleep to my song or dancing to my song <laughs> in the car. I'm like, can I even speak at this age? Like, how, how, do they... <laughs> how do they know how to put those sounds together? Well, dude, I, yeah. I wish we were in the same place. I hope that when you do come to the States uh, and I know that you will, you, you come yeah. and you see us. I'd love to chat more with you and get to know you. And I'm going to dive deeper into the music. When do you think you'll have an album out? I'm hoping end of the year, but I hate deadlines and I, uh, I never work off deadlines. I don't believe in them. And I love music. them. You love deadlines. <laughs> I love yeah. them. He, he lives Opposite his life. I live, by him. I live in a deadline world. Yeah. You, you and I, <laughs> I live in the world of deadlines. I have to, I'm forced to love them. I think maybe uh, I should have said in like music for music and songs. I don't believe in deadlines. <laughs> Art, art does not need a deadline. I get that. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, he's got 187,000 followers on Instagram. Master Wolf, let's, let's get that up. Let's get that up, all right? If you're listening in L.A. around the country, let's get that up. Stay close, man. I'm really, Thanks, really man. psyched to get to know you and hear your music. I appreciate your support, honestly. Congrats. Crazy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for getting up <laughs> in the middle of the night. All right. <laughs> Have you been to Australia? I've been to Sydney. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've been to Sydney, uh, Bonsai Beach, Bondi Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, you fit that scene. You've got that look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just I don't even want to know what that's it's, it's, really it's, it's not a bad thing. All right, bro. Uh, pleasure. Nice Take care of yourself. Thank nice you so much. You. Peace, peace. Bye. Peace. Oh, peace. man. The song is so good.